Hey, welcome back to Connection Point Studies. We're really glad to have you here. This is a great series that we're starting. It's called The Family Business. It's great to take the summer off, but it's so great to get started again. And so I hope you're ready to dig in with us and study. I know that you've been ready, and maybe this is the first time you've got your group together. And so let me just remind you of a couple things. One of the things that we do is try and encourage you to get everyone in the group involved. So this very first question that we're going to have for you is actually a question that involves everybody in the group. We call it a coffee cup question because take your coffee and spend a little time and everybody answer the question. Now we have a, a guest with us here today. This is Brian. Brian's our uh, encounter pastor and he works with, tell us who you work with. Uh, youth and young adults, junior high, high school, young adults, all the way around. I work in some capacity with, with everybody. And the reason we have him here is because this first topic is about how to find a good partner. How yeah. do you find a good partner? Really, it's a little bit about dating now for some of the married couples. There's still some applications there, right? Uh, yeah, they always say that you need to continue dating all through your marriage, there, right? There you go. Okay. The, the same person, obviously. Yeah, the same person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Brian's got a warm-up question for you to get going here. Uh, let's give you a warm-up question, and we'll get started. Yep. Right now, uh, every high schooler, junior high, they're dating, and the young adults are officially looking for their, their future spouses. So my question for you is, what qualities were you looking for, or what qualities are you currently looking for in a partner? Okay, and before you come back, what we want you to do is read Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 23, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, Brian, uh, you know, uh, t tell me about the qualities you were looking for. Uh, I had three. Did you I have three, really? I tell, I tell all the youth, the first one was they had to love Jesus as much or more than me. Second, they had, a, they had to have a great personality. And then third, I had to be physically attractive. In that order. That was so, my order. Really? That's awesome. That's yeah. that great. I can't, I wish I, you know, that was a hundred years ago for me. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. I remember one of the qualities that I had is I had to be willing to go anywhere with me. Mm. In particular, I wanted to travel to uh, the foreign mission field a number of times. And so that was just a prerequisite. Before I'd even date them, I wanted to know whether they would be willing to go uh, anywhere with yeah. me. And one of the questions was, would you have kids in a hospital overseas? And that would be tough. That Which was a really interesting question. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, anyway, so hopefully you had a good chance to share a little bit about your qualities. But yeah. we actually ask you to start to read the Scripture, which when you first look at the Scripture, you may say, well, what does this have to do with dating? But I think you'll understand as we begin to develop the question. So Brian, give them the first question we want them to look at. Uh, how do you let the Holy Spirit guide your life? especially in, as it has to do with finding the right partner, developing the right partner in your life. And in particular, we want you to look at verses uh, 16, 17, and 18 to find the answers to those questions. Okay, so Brian, uh, as they've answered that question and they've thought about that, I, I bet they've had a lot of different answers in this I'm regard. Sure. yeah. Because it, it's... It's kind of one of those questions that when you say, how do you let the Holy Spirit be your guide? It can be such a broad question. Oh yeah, absolutely. But when we look at this, and verse 16 says, let the Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be um, doing what your sinful nature craves. Isn't that really the problem with the Holy Spirit in this whole arena? Yeah, you know, I think when you are letting the Holy Spirit guide your life, you got to listen to Him. You actually mm -hmm. got to let Him speak to you. So... In the dating arena, especially with kids, I, I think you see this with kids. Yeah. What's the what's the human nature versus the Holy Spirit battle that goes oh. on in their lives? And I think it's I think it's what our culture is that we have to date this perfect person that looks specifically a perfect way. When I think it's not, I think the Holy Spirit's going to lead us into a healthy, wholesome relationship with somebody, and not necessarily a relationship that's going to directly go against what we believe in what the, and what's in the Bible. Right. And what's interesting to me is, I, is I've seen people in this partnership and the dating and, and, and all of this that takes place is that I've seen people that are driven by the physical relationship. And when the physical relationship, really that's our human nature. Yeah. And that's not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. called they're in heat, you know. <laughs> so so yeah. that, there's a problem there. So when you let the Holy Spirit, it, you kind of have to go against 
even your physical desires at times and, and begin to listen to the Spirit yes. in His life. I, I love what it says here. The sinful nature wants to do evil. So you do have this conflict in your heart and there's a certain amount of, of um, openness that you have to have in your heart. Now, we've got a second question for them to uh, focus on. Let's, let's ask that question. Yeah. Uh, what kind of partner would we desire if we let the flesh rule? <laughs> that's, a great, uh, that's a great question. And you can again look at verses 17 and 18, um, or even uh, 19. You can kind of look at a list there and uh, begin to develop out of this scripture uh, what, what would happen if the flesh rules. So when you let the flesh rule in your life, look at Galatians 5.19. When you follow the the desires of your sinful nature, so there you get the idea. This is what's going to happen. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, boy, that's a huge part of dating relationships today, isn't it? Huge. Youth and married. Yeah. Impurity, um, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery. Idolatry, talk about that. How, How does idolatry work in dating? Oh man, I see it all again all the time in youth, and I see it in married couples as well. The married couples we hang out with, where you put your spouse over God. Mm-hmm. You choose your spouse and what you do with them, how you date them, and uh, you put God underneath them. That is so true. And then there's sorcery, hostility, quarreling. This is huge, right? Yeah. And even in our own relationships, you can begin to see the natural desires of the flesh. Jealousy. A lot of people think jealousy is a sign of love. It's really not, is it? No, not at all. It, it just breeds insecurity. Breeds yeah, it's insecurity. a sign of mistrust, isn't Absolutely. it? It's the opposite of love. Absolutely. Outbursts of anger, selfish ambition. Anytime you look for a, a healthy relationship, Selfish ambition, has, you have to go against that, yeah. don't you? Yeah, they say there's some statistic like every, it takes seven years for you to even be, be, begin to think of your spouse first before yourself. Right. That's a hard, hard thing to get rid of, this selfish ambition. Then there's dissension and division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. <laughs> and the truth is, a lot of people look for a dating relationship in, a, in a, the worst possible yeah. places. It's kind of all of, the, yeah. all of these there. Absolutely. And, and so we can see those aren't the healthy ways. So that's what happens when you begin to look for a partner uh, with your flesh. Now, the next question we want you to focus on is, is what? Uh, what qualities should we look for in a partner nowadays? And if you're a married couple today, uh, think of that, this more in the terms of what qualities should you have in your own life mm. as you think about this. So specifically, we want you to look at uh, verses uh, 22 and 23 as you begin to look at those qualities. You know, verse 22 says the Holy Spirit will produce fruit in our life. So take a look at these qualities and you begin to see God's Spirit. When you're listening to God's Spirit, this is what you see. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. I kind of think these build on top of each other, don't you? Oh yeah, and they're not easy either. Right. They're definitely not easy. So how do you start with love? I, you know, it seems like love encompasses all the other things, but... Uh, what, what's the way that you show love to somebody that, that you are dating or, or married to? How, how, how does that play out in oh, real man. life? Uh, I, think, I think, honestly, the first way you begin to love somebody is you choose to die to yourself first. You know, you choose first to take away your own selfishness, your own desires. Let and me you put you on the spot. How do you do that? Person. Oh boy. <laughs> How do I choose to love my wife first? <laughs> no, it's uh, just hard to do, isn't it? It is. And it's, we fail yeah. at it a lot, don't we? I fail at it a lot, yeah, especially. We, yeah. we both, as you look at this and we, we think about this, I want you to think about these qualities in your life. So take a look at this. Love, joy. You know, a lot of people are just hard to get along with because they, they're not happy. Yeah, they're if pessimist. they're not happy alone, yeah. they're never going to be happy together, yeah. are they? Yeah. Peace. What, what, what do you think of that, that quality? Uh, I, think, I think some people, uh, when it comes to personality styles, people like arguing. Some people actually naturally like fighting. That would not be me. I, and I, th- <laughs> I think there's another part of this, too, which peace can be contentment. Um, you know, that's where they're at peace with themselves and, yeah. and patience, which means if you're going to live with another human, you've got to have patience and yeah. kindness and goodness. 
Well, there's quite a list there, and I'm hoping that you will begin to look at that list in your own life and apply it to your Mm -hmm. life, Mm -hmm. which brings us to the last question that we want them to look at here. Yeah. Uh, Where am I in the process of God's Spirit making me to be a better partner? And that's probably a good one for you to talk about as a whole group. Take time and each of you share on this, uh, pro- on this question so that you can uh, begin to think about that in your own life. And then we'll come back and talk about it. Perfect. Well, hopefully you finished the, this uh, session and had a good discussion on this. And here's our desire. Our desire is that through this series that you will deepen your relationships as a family Mm -hmm. and individually with God. And so I encourage you to make make it a priority in your life to make every one of these sessions, I encourage you to do that. So as you close out, I I encourage you to pray for each other. If somebody's there that is in a dating relationship or sometimes they have kids in a dating Mm -hmm. relationship, maybe take a little bit of time and pray for the future spouse that they may have. Yeah. And uh, take a little bit of time to develop uh, your prayer time around the group and, and pray for each other. And we'll see you next week at Connection Point Studies.